Hi, I'm Ken, and uh, these are videos showing my exploits into the world of uh, solar energy. Now, most people go out and buy solar panels. It's able you're able to make your own, and it's exactly what I'm doing. And what we're going to do first is give you a basic primer on solar technology. Photovoltaic cells function the same way as a battery. It has a negative side, which is this side, and a positive side. And what it does is the same thing as a battery. It uses free electrons that are broken down by a process, either uh, a energy transfer such as sunlight and solar cells or a chemical reaction to free electrons and create a imbalance that wants to flow from positive to negative to even the equilibrium. So, uh, chemical batteries are great. They have instant power, they last, but and some of them are rechargeable. The only problem is that eventually they have the end of the life. Photovoltaic cells last upwards of 25 years, if not longer, but the uh, good output of the energy only lasts on average about 20 years for a well-made solar cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a little bit of the nomenclature. First things first, I want to impress on you just how thin uh, a solar panel is. I'm going to use this one. This is a broken solar cell. It's still functional. It's not as strong as the uh, full panels because of the broken areas. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just how thin an actual solar cell is. This one here measures approximately 15 thousandths of an inch thick. Uh, this is a cell that has a small coating. The other cells, they average uh, downwards of 12 thousandths of an inch, which is, to put it in perspective for those of you who don't know what it is, take three sheets of printer paper, stack them on top of each other, then hold it from the edge, and that's how thick these solar panels are. They're very fragile because they are crystalline, and they do break very easily. Now, the front of the panel is the negative side. And it consists of these small silver lines, which are known as either fingers or rays, and they collect the electrical energy and send it to the thicker silver points, which are actually wires called bus lines. Now, most solar panel or cells have either one, two, or three. You might find more, but you're never going to find anything less than one panel, one finger, unless it's a huge panel, and then you're going to find those collector, those bus lines on the outside. And on the back, you have these six white tabs. These are actually the soldering points for the corresponding buses on the front that you connect your positives to. Now, there are multiple forms of tabs. This right here is known as a short tab cell. As you can see, you've got these silver, the silver bus lines sticking off. The only problem with these, this particular cell, is you can buy these cheap on eBay or Amazon. The only problem is though that you have to solder on a tab, a bus wire, or a bus wire, which is known, or a, um, a tabbing wire all the way so it connects to the back three of the panels here. It's long and drawn out. So you might be better off going with an on tab cell. The other downside is that in the, that the some of these cells are recycled or refurbished, you know, they're, they're uh, pulled from large panels, that in cutting them, as you can see, those wires are kind of deformed, and in the process of cutting them or stacking or shipping, the cells will crack along here, uh, which will, in the event of thermal expansion, contraction, just from getting hot and cold from being in the sunlight, they will eventually fracture and the power will diminish. And if they're fractured in the right places or fractured enough, they will stop producing and actually break the circuit. So your solar panel will stop functioning. 
Okay, this is an untabbed solar cell. As you can see, you have these lines here. These lines are where we're going to put a, a tab onto. We're going to attach, and that tab is called tabbing wire. Now these I did last night. These are fully tabbed solar cells. As you can see, the wires are long enough and that they will eventually, when they're, when they're put on properly, and there you go. As I told you, these, these, these panels are extremely brittle and they break pretty much by looking at them. I'm just glad I have a few extras to work with. So we'll put that in the pile and we will work on that. Uh, use a project where we use partial cells. So let me flip this pellet, this cell over gently, and this one, and you will see these tabs do in fact go from side to side. Now, what I'm going to do today in this partial video is show you exactly how to tab an untabbed cell. Now, there are th three things you want, or four things you want to do. Uh, first thing is you're going to want a flux pen. This is like a magic marker. This contains a rosin core flux, which is used for electronics. Acid core can be used, but acid core is inferior for electronic circuitry. And in order to charge it, you shake it up and then you press down to just like you would a, a highlighter or a uh, marking pen to get the, the flux flowing. And then we have two forms of wire. This is tabbing wire. This is a thin, flat, pre-soldered uh, coated wire that is used for creating your tabs that go that carry the electrical current from cell to cell to cell. And then you have a thicker wire, which is called a bus wire. This wire is used for making the major connections. Uh, you're going from cell to cell, you're going to go in a zigzag pattern or in a pattern. This carries it from one straight line to another to allow you to make your turns and it will eventually be used to hook up your outside connections to a terminal box uh, or to uh, however you wish to join your cells to either your the rest of your energy system or to uh, additional cells. And as you can see, this is also pre-soldered, and you can see just how much thicker it is. Okay, the tabbing, okay, we, the bus wire is something we'll be using at a slightly later date. Now, uh, there are a lot of different ways to do it, and uh, at the moment, I'm still toying with the best ways to do it. So... What you're going to want to do is take your flux pen and you're going to want to put a line of flux down the bus line. And you're going to know it's going to be there because the flux will leave a slightly shinier you can see it slightly darker and shiny surface on the bus. What I'll do is let me widen that. I don't need to, but it will help demonstrate. I'll go off to the sides so you can see it on the actual crystalline structure of the cell. Uh, see that? Okay, that right there is going to help your solder adhere and what it does is it creates a barrier to oxidation which is oxygen which combines with a lot of elements to create and when something oxidizes it creates a barrier to electron flow. Rust is 
uh, is metal oxida is metal oxidizing. And what most people don't understand or realize is that fire is extremely rapid oxidation uh, and the consumption of carbon uh, using carbon. Now, next thing you want to use is a rosin core electronics soldering. Uh, electronic soldering. Uh, this is lead free. It's a very soft alloy, and it's a real. It's, it's really nice. Now, the most important thing you want to do is you have a soldering iron. This is a 30 watt with a really heavy duty copper tip. And it's going to be used to transfer the heat to melt the solder and to do to actually make the bonding. Now, one thing I've learned is if you see the glass underneath the surface I'm working on, this is a piece of quarter inch tempered glass. This serves two purposes. One, this is what the solar panel is going to be made. This is going to be the face of the solar panel. You never use plexiglass, you never use mylar, acrylic, or regular sheet glass because uh, polycarbonates will turn yellow and they do fracture in cold weather. And glass, you have to understand, if, if, a, piece, if a hailstorm comes up, you're going to want something that's going to take a small amount of beating. Uh, with the storms we've had in Missouri where we've had reports of golf ball and softball sized hail, I don't know how well something like this would stand up to it, but it will stand up a mite better than standard glass. So, it also, and this also works as critically in the manufacture of the, of the panels, the tempered glass makes an excellent heat sink. You do not want to get these panels too hot or these cells because they will break if you get them too hot and maintain heat in any given area for too long of a period. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the soldering iron. Now, I do have a tub off camera of rosin core flux and I have a wet sponge or damp sponge to get a nice silver look on the metal. And I just touch my iron to the solder and then what I will do is I will gently start at one side and I will trace a line of solder down the panel. This will give the panel uh, a little additional solder for the wires to stick to it. And as you can see, uh, you want the solder to be nice and shiny. If it's dull, like uh, looks like a piece of uh, like a white, if it's whitish or grayish in color without being a shiny metallic, or has a lumpy texture to it, that's what's called a cold solder joint. It's going to either impede or uh, the flow of electricity, or it's not going to flow at all. So, let me go ahead and uh, let me prep the other, the other side real quick. And you want to just go in with a slow, even motion. And that looks nice and shiny. It's a little bit grainy, but then again, I put a very thin film on to ensure that it's going to stick. Now, uh, you can either, now you can, a lot of times I'll reflux this because these flux pens are waste not, want not. Reflux. And then this is where the fun starts. This is where steady hand and being able to hold things down comes into place. You want to take your wire. Now, I've done a lot of blacksmithing and metal work, so my hands are a little more used to heat. But some people will actually use a small, very, very gentle padded weight to do this. But what I'll do is I'll take just a little dab of solder my iron and I will touch 
touch it. Okay, it's sticking. Now, be careful. Rosin Corp Flux is tacky. So, when you're moving your hands, be gentle when it's on the cell because it, your hands, you, there's enough pressure of, this, of the Rosin Corp Flux that you will break the cell. Now, what I'll do is take a pair of tweezers, gently hold it down, and hold the wire down to an end to make sure it sticks all the way. Okay. And then I will take the wire, line it up on the bus, and then using a slow motion, even, oh, even heat, I will bond the bus line or the bus wire to the cell. Now, as you can see, the wire is nice and shiny, which means that's a good that's a good bond. That's that is a good that is a good uh, soldering joint. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one. Now, so, now, I used a lot of flux on this side, so I'm not going to bother fluxing it. And if you, when you get to the point, you can actually flux. Sometimes, some people put the flux on the wire, some people don't. Sometimes, it's I've noticed that you can get a good bond by putting a good amount of flux on, because too much flux is a bad thing, too. solder kind of like chewing tobacco little dabble do ya or old Pompeii okay stuck okay it's done This takes a little practice, and even I, with a lot of with all the soldering experience I have, um, even I have a little trouble because sometimes you get a little uh, rough edges where it doesn't want to drag properly on the iron. Okay, now, there is something you want to be aware of. Every once in a while, you will have a small little ridge or a bump on your on your soldering joints. You don't want that. That's a cold joint, and also in with these panels, any little ridge or bump or sharp point on the solder joints, it will poke through the encapsulation, which will be done in a little bit later time. And it also gives it a point where you can apply pressure directly to that cell, giving it a point where it can be fractured. Now, these cells are, and we'll, I'll, go, I'll go through an adjoining cell to cell real quick. These cells are being put together in uh, 28 cells in a panel. Each cell is 1.8 watts and one half volt. Now, this cell in itself is not going to give you a lot of power, but when you start to join the cells together, in okay, these are being joined together in series. Basically, this is the same thing as putting a battery inside a mag light, where you're stacking your batteries one on top of the other. What it does is it increases the voltage and increases the wattage of the cell. So. Mathematically, 14, okay, 28 cells at 1.8 watts is giving me approximately 52 watts of power at 14 volts. And the amperage will also increase. Now, amperage will increase when we're setting these in parallel. And we'll get to that in a little, a little bit later in the time. Now, to join cells together, it's the same principle. Flux. Now 
this one here is slightly different of a, of a because what we're going to do now is we're going to directly apply because the background is a different material we're going to apply solder to the back This just makes it easier and gives you a guaranteed uh, positive connection when it comes time to join the cells. Now you're going to want to use all six tabs to maximize connectivity and electron flow with it from cell to cell. It will also give your cell a little bit more robustness because you're adding a little extra material to it. Now. <clears throat> one cell stacked on top of another. Now, some people stack them right on top of each other. I've got room to kill. So, and I've also, there's also the matter of a cap encapsulation. Encapsulation is a way of completely sealing your cells once they're formed into a panel and sealing them in a, in a polymer that is a platinum based or inside a sheet that's been shrink wrapped, vacuumed all the air atmosphere out of it and then heated and then bonded chemical, bonded with heat and uh, vacuum pressure to form a sandwich. Uh, what I'm going to be using is a liquid polymer that is a platinum based it, which is basically it's a clear it's like a clear epoxy but it is much more flexible which is something you really definitely want when it comes to cells and I use the spacers to guarantee the length of my cells as well as a place for when it comes time to encapsulate my cells the encapsulant liquid is going to gel is going to flow through evenly and coat evenly on both sides as well as ensure that my cells, if there's a mistake in a soldering joint, is not going to short out the cell to the front or to the back, causing a potential problem with either additional heat or a lack of electrons flowing. Which would, once you're encapsulated, if, if you do that, it will kill your cell and all the money you just spent on this project is pretty much out the window. Now, this is really simple. Towards down. Okay. Make sure the spacer is in there properly. Once the first tab is down, both sides, hold it down. So this way you know your your bus wire is making is maximum contact. It goes down. Now, I don't know if you can see it. So let me just finish that. Let me just finish tabbing this out. But where I picked up my soldering iron, I have. Oops. Let me move this. This is a good reason to have a pair of tweezers handy. Now, ever so slightly, move those bus wires. And sure, it's going to come up and connect with it. Now, I'm going to show you something real quick, and I'm hoping you can see this. You can see now, this is a 1 watt, 3.6 volt solar cell. If you look very closely right here, and here, I'll turn those, 
you can see those little tabs. Those are the sharp points I was talking about. Easiest way to get rid of those is again the fluid motion of the soldering iron. Heat the heat the wire up. You just heat your side. You heat your bus line up, and just move your soldering iron straight across. Easy peasy, and voila. Those high, those points and ridges disappear on you. Now, you can hear the cracking in the background. That's actually the solar cell expanding. Remember we talked about thermal expansion, which is bad for cell. This is why, again, you don't want to apply a lot of pressure to these cells. You saw just how fragile they are. Uh, a little bit of heat will crack it. And that right there is the first part to creating a solar cell or actually a solar panel. Now we're, let's go through a little bit of nomenclature real quick. These panels are known as a cell. It is also known as a module. A group of modules inside a, inside a single panel is known as, of course, a panel. Now, when you have two or more solar panels hooked together, it is known as an array. And my goal is to have five of these panels manufactured for a total of approximately 260 watts of power, which will be hooked up to uh, deep cycle marine batteries, a charger, uh, a, and a battery conditioner, as well as a load splitter that will transfer power from the solar panels into the into the batteries and then the batteries into a load which is a power inverter or a 12 volt power uh, device that uses 12 volt power so I can use this off the grid so I suppose the big question is why am I building them for a couple of reasons the reasons I'm building them is because we don't know where our government's going and I plan on having electricity uh, if the power if the shit hits the fan also you don't know if a man-made catastrophe or natural catastrophe uh, hurricane knocks off the power knocks off the grid tornado earthquake uh, a CME which is a coronal mass ejection a massive plasma energy bombardment that knocked out Toronto and has knocked out in the 1800s actually pretty much destroyed the telegraphs and sent telegraphs from New York to California chattering away for almost three days on its own because of the static electricity. Or just in the event that I want to go camping and I want to watch TV or I, or I have a dead battery on my motorhome or on my friend's car and we need to charge the batteries. Free power, free electricity, anywhere you go. These cells will work in cloudy days and um, I've actually noticed on some larger panel arrays of actually getting a positive voltage uh, on a full on a full boom. So again, this is Ken. I'm signing off for now, and I will add more to these lessons as I progress. And hopefully, you have as much fun building them as I do.